Hey everybody, welcome back to HomeRecordingMadeEasy.com and here on my YouTube channel in this video, it's our part two of our three part series on the Neumann MT48 audio interface. In this video, we're going to, uh, I'm gonna give you a little bit of a sound example of what it sounds like, what the preamps sound like, the EQ, the gate, the compressor, how you can easily set up a sound using your microphone here on the Neumann NT4, MT48. We're using the Shure SM7B. If you missed part one where I went through the top 15 features that I like about the Neumann NT48, click the link in the description box below. And if you wanna pick up one of these for yourself over at Sweetwater, link will be in the description box. It is an affiliate link. Thank you so much in advance for supporting the channel. Full disclosure, we did get this from Sweetwater, so I can bring this review to you, but you know Uncle Dave here is gonna tell you what I like, what I don't like about it, and give you the down and dirty. So thank you so much, Sweetwater, for being so cool, sending me one of these. These things are hot tamales. They're hard to get. Nobody seems to have them in stock as I'm recording this video. I was able to, to swindle one from Sweetwater so I could bring this series of videos to you. Thank you so much in advance. Again, check the link in the description box below. So before we get started, make sure you like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Also, if this is your first time here, go out to homerecordingmadeeasy.com and I wanna give you that free mixing course. It's right on the homepage. $97 course, all yours, absolutely free. It's my gift to you just for visiting homerecordingmadeeasy.com and if you stick around to the end of the video, I'm gonna give you another free gift. So here we go. So we're gonna talk about this microphone, set it up here in the Neumann MT48, and I'm also gonna show you the remote control app so you can see how the desktop app kind of works as well. So I'm using the SM7B because it's a very popular podcasting mic, live stream mic, broadcasting mic, and it's a mic that takes needs a lot of gain in order to drive it. And typically you would use a Shure SM7B with something, some kind of an inline preamp, like a cloud lift. Um, we're not using that right now. Right now I got the Shure SM7B plugged directly into channel one on the Neumann NT48 here, and there is no processing on my voice whatsoever. And in my headphones, it sounds pretty good to me. Um, but we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna put some compression, some EQ, and maybe a gate in place if we need a gate in case you have some background noise and show you how easily you can do this uh, and how the Shure SM7B sounds once you put a little bit of treatment. So this is what it sounds like with absolutely no treatment. So how do we get to where we wanna go? Okay, so like we showed you in the last videos we walked through, if you're not on the home screen on your MT48, you can just hit this button here, the diamond, that'll bring you back to the home screen. You can see I'm here on channel one. All we need to do is hit the little mic button or little mic symbol here on the touchscreen, and we have our preamp, EQ, dynamics, mute, all that stuff that we talked about in the last video. Let's go to the preamp. So as you'll see right now, I'm driving this with 53 dB of gain. And I don't know how it sounds over YouTube, I won't know till the end of the video, but I can tell you in my headphones, this thing is absolutely dead quiet. There is no inline preamp, as I mentioned, with the Shure SM7B. This is being driven directly from the Neumann MT48. And we're, I don't know, we're about negative 6 dB of gain, uh, 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 peaking on my voice here. If we wanna adjust that, all we have to do is tap this and then use the big jog wheel. I'll turn it down. So now it's getting quieter. We could turn it up and we could go, you know, now we're at almost 60. I think we got 78 dB of gain on tap. And now we're, we're peaking out around a negative three or so. That's probably a little bit hot. But again, in my headphones, again, there's no gate, there's no nothing on. I can hear a little bit of a faint hiss, but I mean, again, this is a great test because most microphones don't need this much gain. Now, if I put a cloud lift in front, I could turn down the preamp probably to about 20 dB, and it may be a little bit cleaner of a sound, but what I'm trying to uh, demonstrate and what I wanna let you know is that you really don't need one. You don't need a cloud lifter. The preamps are super clean, ultra low noise. I gotta really struggle to hear the noise here. So it's really not there. So this is a 58 dB. I probably would turn it down to about there. And now the noise is practically gone. And again, I'm, I would be recording at this level anyway. If I was recording my voice on a podcast or if I was recording an instrument, I would wanna be around a negative 10 dB on the recording side anyway. This thing, we're actually around a negative 6 dB is where we're kind of peaking at. You can see the little peak. Uh, line here in the meter. If I tap that, it'll go away. It'll reset the peak. And you can see I'm peaking around a negative 10, negative eight, negative 10. That's perfect. 53.5 dB of gain. And we got a lot more gain on tap. So that's what it sounds like with the preamp. Now, again, if I want to get back, all I have to do, and we have a pad here that we can use if you wanted to turn your pad on. or turn the pad off, you can do all that stuff. There we go. You have micro line, you can mute it. 
You can't hear me. <laughs> we have a phase flip here if you wanted to do that. We have 48 volts. This doesn't require it. However, if you did decide to use an inline preamp with this, you would probably need the 48 if you want. And then we have a low cut that we could turn on or off here. And I'm going to show you that in the EQ side right now. We're just going to keep it off. So again, we can just go ahead, go back to our diamond here, hit mic again. Now let's go on and let's say to our EQ hit our EQ here. Again, there's no EQ on this whatsoever. Now off camera, I went ahead and I kind of tweaked in a little bit of EQ. If I just turn it on here and there it is. And that is with the EQ on where we have a low cut filter here at about 84 Hertz. Now, again, you can use the low cut filter in the preamp section. So it frees up one of your four bands of your parametric EQ, because this can be peak. It could be a shelf or it can be a cut right okay so that's what it sounds like if we go over to this point here you'll see it about what is that 200 or oh, nothing there and i took out a little bit of mid-range at 504 which is where kind of that nasally kind of thing is on my voice with this microphone and then i put a little bit of a shelf on at about 2.7k about 3 db so this is with my voice with the eq again i could turn it off that's without the eq no treatment at all Nope, no treatment at all. There we go. That's completely flat, nothing. And there we are again with the treatment, which I think sounds really, really good. So just, and again, there's no noise, no nothing. It sounds beautiful. It really, truly does. Now, if we come back out here and we can um, go to dynamics if we want. Now, again, our dynamics uh, here, I'm going to the compressor. Uh, let's see, we're going to the whole dynamic section is on, but the compressor right now is turned off. We have a compressor, a limiter, and a gate section. So if I start with the gate over here, we could turn it on by doing this. And now we have a gate where it takes out completely everything. There was a little bit of, I think I've, I have an air purifier across the room a little bit that I was kind of slightly hearing in my headphones. If you have like an air conditioning system or a central air system or a fan blowing in the background. That gate takes everything and makes it ultra dead silent. And it doesn't even sound like I have a gate on my voice. And we have our threshold here, attack release, okay, and then a little bit of an output makeup gain. So that's with the gate on. I could turn it off by hitting this. That's with the gate off. And again, the only thing I hear slightly in the background just for you playing, keeping score at home, I have an air purifier about maybe 10 feet away from me with a little bit of a room noise. And because I have the gain jacked up quite a bit on the microphone, as you saw, um, I can hear just a tiny bit of that air purifier. It probably won't even come up in the video, but I got a photo. If I, if I, if while I'm talking, I don't hear it. If I stop talking, I hear it just a, just a tiny bit, turn on the gate and it's completely gone wonderful now if we go over to our compressor we just hit this little compress but comp in the middle there's our compressor and again we can turn it on here we have no compression on our voice right now we turn it on here and now we got a little bit of compression happening here about 4 db of compression we have tack release and ratio that's what it off you can hear it all of a sudden my voice kind of jumps out and that's what it's on. It controls those peaks really, really well, especially if you're doing podcasting or doing video tutorials like I do, where I'm looking up at the camera, then looking down, and I, I start changing the proximity effect a little bit. This really helps making sure you don't get too close and get those, those, uh, those spikes coming through. Again, this is with the compressor on, and this is with the compressor off. And again, you can hear as I'm talking and, I'm, and, and, and my voice is changing dynamically, you can hear it coming through in the video that way. If I turn this on, it really controls the dynamics really, really nicely. And again, we're only compressing about four to five dB. And again, we can turn up our makeup gain here if we want to level match it a little bit better. There we go. And now we have a little bit more output gain. Again, that's off and that's on. Okay, pretty cool, right? So that's what we have for gate EQ and compression. Again, I will turn those off. I'll turn off the, uh, the gate here. We'll go back to the EQ. I'll turn that off and that's kind of where we started. So we started with a completely raw microphone here, which again, doesn't sound too bad, but you can hear some of the plosives. You can hear some of the, the, the honkiness, kind of the nasally effect in my voice. Again, turn on that EQ. There we go. We kind of cleaned it up a little with some EQ. Then we kind of come over to the dynamic section. Let's turn on that compressor. Let's turn on that gate. And that's a completely treated voice. And I did all of that in about three minutes off camera just to show you. So, this thing really does sound good. And as I said, as I crank up my headphones, and I mentioned this in the last video, I mean, it is ultra dead quiet. 
and it could get it could get super loud <laughs> in the cans. If I really wanted to get super loud in the cans, it could get super loud in the cans. And these headphone amplifiers, compared to any other audio interface that I've used, especially when I use my Rodecaster Pro 2 for all of the videos that I do here, and I like the Rodecaster because it's kind of a live streaming thing with a little mini mixer and all of that. I'm trying to wonder if maybe this thing could replace that. The one thing I don't like about the Rodecaster is the preamps, they're quiet, but they're not as good as these preamps. They're not nearly as quiet. Even though in the Rodecaster, they say that you don't need an inline preamp for the SM7B. Yes, you do. Because if you don't, the preamps are quite noisy. Even though they say they're ultra quiet. They're not as ultra quiet as this Neumann. No way. And the second thing I don't like about the, the Rodecaster is the headphone amplifier kind of stinks. As soon as you turn it up past like 11 noon to really hear, it in, to really hear the cans, you can hear all the white noise and all the hiss. The amplifiers and those things are not great. They're okay, but they're not at this level. They're not at this level, not even close. Okay, so that is how we easily set up. Just again, hearing the SM7B, it sounds really good. Sounds better than what I've dialed in on my Rodecaster Pro. My Rodecaster Pro has EQ compression gate. It sounds pretty good, but this sounds, this sounds better to me. At least it does to my ear. I don't know. You'll have to be the judge again. This is three times the cost of the Rodecaster Pro 2, and they're not exactly the same product, so let's compare apples to apples. But my point is, this sounds really, 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 really good. Now, what I want to show you quickly, and I'm going to open up the desktop application. I'm going to shrink this up a little bit just so we can get the desktop application on the screen here. Let me shrink this stuff up, and let me open up the web app. So if you come up to the, when you install the toolkit, the Neumann toolkit, you'll get this little uh, icon at the top of your uh, screen here on a Mac. And you're just gonna go to launch remote control. And here it is, and it pops up that quickly. Uh, let me shrink up my video a little, or you know what? I could probably move my video over so we can see this a little bit better. Sorry for the, for that. Okay, so here is the remote control for this unit. So you can do it from here. It is kind of nice because you don't have to be looking, like if you're looking at the screen and you're working in your DAW or something, you may want to use this, maybe put this off on a separate monitor if you wanted to. You don't always have to look down and touch the screen. But again, if I do something here on the app and I take this fader and move it down, you'll see it on the unit itself. It controls the fader and it moves it down right? You can do all of the same things, I think for the most part, as you can do um, when, you're, when you're working on the unit itself, or most of the stuff. So if I click on the mic, I can go to the preamp. Again, I can take this and I could turn it down. I could turn it back up again. Now, the one thing I will say, as you noticed, when I change screens on the remote control, it does not change screens on the hardware itself. I'm not sure if there's something in the settings that will allow that to happen. Um, that I'm not quite sure about. I'll have to read up on that, but I don't think so. So that's one of the things I don't like is that, and we'll get into that into the likes, dislikes video, which will be the next video, where the screen doesn't follow the unit. And again, it's not a showstopper, but it's just something to be aware of. Okay, and again, I could go back here. I can go to my EQ, and I can do all the same things. I can turn the EQ off like we talked about before. I could turn it back on. And if you want to work this way, this is a handy, handy uh, little way to, uh, to work if you like having things on the screen. Again, I can come over here. I can go to Dynamics, and here we are in the Dynamics nice and big and colorful and bright it looks really good now here we already got the unit um, we already have the unit here uh, on the same screen so again if I take the three to one ratio and you'll see it'll change it will change on the unit itself so I'm not really quite now I don't think so the so the desktop app doesn't change what's going on on the screen and I don't believe the screen changes what goes to the desktop app the unit let me see let's try that it's a good question Let's go back to preamp. Okay, so now we're on the preamp on the unit. It does not change on the on the GUI itself. But I'll I have to read up on that. And I'll try to follow up in the likes dislikes video portion of this, which will be the video number three, and I'll tell you whether or not I figured out whether this thing works or not. Because this is I'm not sure why it would be nice that if what happened on the remote control app mirrored what was happening on the unit. Again, it's not a showstopper. I don't think it does, but if I can figure that out, I'll let you guys know in the next video. So that is our next look here 
at the Neumann MT48. Again, it sounds great. I think it sounds good. It'll be interesting to hear it when I do the video edit, how it sounds. Let me know in the comments what you think on how this sounds. For a quick dial-in, it sounds really good. But what I, but like I said, what I will say is that the preamps are very, very high quality, very ultra low noise. I'm driving this thing without a cloud lifter in that is not an easy thing to do. Most units that say, most products that say they can do it without a cloud lifter, technically they can, but the preamps are tend to be noisy. These are not noisy. And again, the headphone amplifier sounds fantastic. And it really, really does. So that's how you can quickly dial this in. Any microphone is gonna sound great. Any instrument is gonna sound good. It's that quick to just go ahead and get back and do everything from the unit. Or again, you can use the desktop uh, app as well if you wanna go back here. And now we're on the same screen and you can do everything right here. Oh, lastly, before we, uh, before we go here, let me close this. You can also, that's the remote control. You can also open up the web app and what the web app will allow you to do, oops, on the other screen, let me drag it over here. What the web app's gonna let you do Again, it's the same kind of thing, but you're going to be able to control it from a tablet, which would be cool. I don't have one in front of me, but you can use this instead. This is kind of nice because it shows you the EQ, the faders, the dynamic section, all in one view, which is kind of nice. And again, if I what I change, uh, I just noticed here what I'm changing on the unit. Let me just see here. Does that work? Okay, so I noticed that it physically works, but it's not, again, it's not mirroring what's happening on the unit, which I'm not really sure why that is. So if we, even if we go over to the dynamic section here and you can see on the unit, our ratio, if I take our ratio here and I turn that up or down, oh, okay, that's controlling, that's, that's mirroring the unit. I don't know why it wasn't on, why it wasn't on the fader. That doesn't seem to make a whole lot of sense to me. So like if I take fader one here coming in on mic one and I turn it up a little bit, it doesn't move the fader on the unit. So maybe there's certain parameters and certain functions where what you do on the screen happens on the physical unit and some that do not. Let's see how the EQ looks over here and then we'll end this video here. So here's our EQ. So if I take this point and drag it up, Oh, I got to do it from here. I'm going to go up. Okay, so it does. So the EQ does mirror the unit. Again, I'm not quite sure why it doesn't mirror on the fader. Again, I'll have to check into that. But the point is, you can use this on a, on a phone, on a tablet. Again, you can use this on your desktop if you want to. Just remember now, this is web apps. You have to be connected to the internet where the remote control is installed locally on your machine. So if you always have an internet connection, and I would assume most of us do, this might be a better solution if you want to work on the screen as opposed to the unit because everything is here in one spot where the remote, remote control, you have to click through a bunch of buttons. It's nice to be able to see everything right here. So... That is a look at the MT48 and how you can get a microphone set up and how you get EQ compression and gating kind of happening as well as the preamp. Now, as I said at the beginning of the video, make sure you check the link in the description box below because you'll be able to go out to Sweetwater and pick up one of these Neumann MT48s for yourself. And if you come back for the next video, we're going to go through my list of likes and dislikes and where I think this can be improved and as well as the things that I really like about this unit. So check that link in the description box below. And if you have not seen part one where I walk through the, the functions of the unit in a little bit more more detail, you could go check out part one. That link will be in the description box below. So as I said at the beginning of the video, I want you to go to homerecordingmadeeasy.com. I want to give you that free mixing course. Once you get that course and you go through it, if you want to take one of my other full-on mixing courses, and I have everything from mixing, mastering, EQ compression, everything from beginner all the way up through advanced and everything in between, I want to give you a 25% discount coupon code. That coupon code is YouTube25. You stick that in at checkout, it'll take 25% off any course on the website. So make sure you like, share, and subscribe. And until the next video where we talk a little bit more about what Uncle Dave likes and dislikes about the Neumann MT48, I've been Dave with HomeRecordingMadeEasy.com. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. I'll see you in the next video.